Hi, this is John Lockwood for Craft Artist from Crafts 2 and this video tutorial is to show you hints, tips and techniques using the brand new Mica Magic by Craft Artist. Mica Magic is a revolutionary new product and a new way of inking, colouring and adding depth and dimension to different projects. Unlike standard mica, this is a heavily pigmented mica that is in a cream binder. So it isn't a soft powder and neither is it a harsh paint that needs to have water added to it. It has the colour in the pigment plus mica compacted down with a quick drying cream binding solution. It comes in two different palettes. This is the Summer Brights and we also have the Autumn Hues. The Autumn Hues has a beautiful selection of browns, beiges, russets, reds and pinks and purples, shades like that. All autumnal shades. The Summer Brights has a mixture of bright colours. We go from this sort of orangey colour, sort of flower centre colour, through golds to reds to bright pinks to bright greens to blues to purples. The palettes weren't designed to encompass every colour, they're to have beautiful tones and shades that you can use all together. So, this tutorial I'm going to show you now a few different things that you can actually do with the Mica Magic palette. So I'm going to pop that to one side and the very first thing that I like to do with this is to show you on a die cut piece. So I'm going to apply this with my finger and I'm going to go into the gold, pick some up lightly and just rub it over the top. And this gives you the look of having a gilding wax. So it gives you that beautiful shade, shades and shine that you would get from a gilding wax. We can see there. But the fantastic thing is that the product blends and mixes. So I can pick up this pinky colour and add a pinky hue to the shade. I can go to one of the other bronze colours and add a little bit of that. A little bit of orange a little bit of red and one of the wonderful things is I've just used red I can now go and pick up some white colour as long as I use a finger dauber it won't contaminate the colour I'm using so I'll just add some shades and then finally I'm going to add a little bit more gold over the top to add a sheen so that's using a die cut shape and going over a pale colour we can do exactly the same over a black and it will work because it's mica over a black shade. So I've got a little die cut here that I've got on my desk and I can just again go over. This is a little bit of the greeny colour and we can create a kind of verdigris look just using my finger going over with the green. I'm then going to go over with the coppery shade and add a little bit of the copper. Go into a paler green just to take it off, perhaps add a little bit of orange for a little bit of warmth and again go over them with a the brownie copper and finish with more of the green. We can really mix those colours about. If I actually add that to a tag we can see there. So we can use it on die cuts to emphasise the detail, to emphasise any emboss or deboss lines. Here's a black leaf cut again from the John Next Door Autumn Leaves. And see there I can just go over lightly with my finger and this time on the reverse it's showing the beautiful embossed effect so we can get some real different looks on our die cuts straight in there with a the finger what we can also do is mica magic sticks and is permanent to most surfaces so this is a piece of grey board so what i'm going to do now is just going to take a blending petal again one of the tools available from crafts too which allows me to pick up more colour and I can just take some colour straight from the palette and straight onto the card. I don't have to worry about mixing the colours. The colours mix absolutely perfectly. So let's go in with a bit of pink, shall we? And add a bit of pink into there. A little bit darker. I'm going to go into a bit of green and add some green in. And on this pale colour, it's giving me a really simple coat but I've gone from craft card straight through to that. But of course I can add more intensity by building up shades, by adding more onto the top. So I can actually 
add layer after layer. Now, the product is actually neutral. And what that means is there is nothing in there that will stop you being able to stamp or being able to ink or draw over the top. So although it's a self-adhesive cream product, lighten it with a little bit of white there, it does mean that I can stamp over this. So I'm going to take the tag I've just coloured, I'm just going to pop that in, and I'm going to take one of the collage stamps. I'm going to use one of the autumn stamps from the 2Js range. So let's just move that down a little bit so that I've got it held in my magnets. There we go. Just going to pick up the collage stamp and I'm going to stamp this with standard Versafine. So unlike other painting mediums, you don't have to use a particular ink. You don't have to use a stays on with it. You can use any standard ink that you would use in any sort of process. So your Versafine, any of your Mementos or anything like that. So just inking that, turn it over and give it a good press. Okay, you can see there I've got all those shades through, but I've got a good covering of ink. If I want to make it darker, I can just add more ink on and again ink the stamp. With it being neutral, it means that I'm not getting any up pick of the colour and they just show through. So there we've got a nice simple tag coloured with the Mica Magic. We can add a few of our little leaves on. Let's put a little soldier on. And we've gone from that. So you can see simply if I want to add around the edges, just colour lightly. Let's add some main colour into the body. A little bit of red for autumn. And there we go. So very simply done. So two processes we can do. The other thing we can do with Mica Magic, I've got the stamp out now. I'm going to take exactly the same stamp and I'm using some of the John Next Door stamping card, which is the new Super Smooth 300 GSM. And I'm going to ink my stamp with a standard embossing ink. I'm using the Eyes Ink embossing ink. Now, what we will see with this, because I haven't cleaned this stamp, so I will get some black from this, because I didn't think this one through completely, but that's usual with me. There we go. So I'm actually getting it showing in the black. So what I can then do is just take again my finger blend, my finger dauber, or a standard blending tool, and I can actually colour this image so I can pick up the colour directly and we can colour that image I want a little bit of green in the centre let's have those leaves green and I can shade and colour my stamp and it's really easy if you've never coloured before you find this one of the easiest things you do I'm going to go into this little purpley colour here and just blend a little bit of the purpley colour into those leaves. I'm then going to go into this light pink and we'll put a basis on these seed pods. And then I'm going to go into, I'm going to bring in the autumn shades and I'm going to start to pick up some of the autumny shades just to colour again these seed pods a little bit at the corner. I'm going to go over the top and colour the wood in really simply I'm just going randomly for whichever shades I want just using the same dauber this is one of the massive advantages of the mica magic I don't have to change daubers and have a different one for different colors I can just blend them all together and then when it's finished I've got a beautiful sheen and shine colored piece in no time at all so that's using black with a little bit of the embossing ink. The embossing ink isn't as important, but the embossing ink did pick up the black that was already on my stamp because I didn't clean my stamp. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take another stamp. I'm going to take the winter collage stamp again from the 2J Stamp Company, and I'm going to ink this just with clear embossing ink. 
because what we can get with the Mica Magic is a beautiful, not a resist, but almost a darkening shade. It'll make sense when it comes through. So just make sure my stamp's down. Got a little bit of colour coming through again from the ink, but I can go over onto my colours of mica. And if you can see, what happens is, wherever the mica touches, it colours the background, but where it actually touches the embossing ink, it darkens. So the, res the, the design actually starts to reveal. So let's use a little bit of pink there. And you can see as I'm using darker shades, the background colours as well. But where we've got that embossing ink, then the colour darkens, revealing the design underneath. And as we polish off, each darker shade works just as well. We'll take a little bit of the goldy colour, but if we can see there, the design is revealed underneath. And we would trim that out, but it looks as though we've been really inky in the background, but somehow we've managed to get a different colour shading on everywhere. Absolutely love this technique. So two ways with stamps with the Mica Magic. So I'm going to move my stamp press out now and I'm going to show you, I'm going to take now a piece of black card and this again is a new, new of the John Next Door black core card at 300 GSM. And this is a mask or stencil that I've made using a piece of the 300 GSM card. I've used this a lot of times, but because the Mica Magic has absolutely no moisture in it, it isn't water based, then what we actually find is that we can use and cut a mask, colour through it, and it doesn't wreck in the way it would if we were using ink on it. So I can just pick up colours again at random and shade through all of the apertures cut from when I've die cut from this. So I'm just going to go and put some leaves in. There we go. Going roughly over it, taking again no care, no massive amounts of time, just colouring through. So going different shades, I can go into this dark, take the colour off, go into the white and get absolutely no colour into the white from the other shade. As long as I'm using a finger dauber, so straight into the beigey brown rub that colour off into the white, no brown in the white. And when I reveal that, you'll see I get a beautiful look of tumbling leaves. And all I simply do is to take a brush and brush off any excess. You want to use a soft brush and we've got that mixed and then fixed on there. So straight on to black. But of course it works exactly the same on white. So just take a piece of white card, pop the same mask back. I can use it lots of time. And this time I'm going to go from the summer palette. I'm going to go and use some of the reds. So I want some brighter shades this time again. From the red into this yellowy colour. Don't have to worry, the colours will mix on my plate or on the cart work, but won't mix inside the palette itself. Obviously, if you take the colour straight on your finger and wipe it from black straight into white, then you will transfer, but it will just sit on the surface. So what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna go into the black and I'm gonna darken some of these by adding some black on. So a little bit of black just to darken. And then I'm going to go from the black into the white. And no black transfers to the white, which is the magic of this mica. We'll peel that one off, give it a blow. And again, we've got a beautiful background of shiny, soft, subtle mica covering the white card. So with white and with black, 
straight through a die cut piece. Now the Mica Magic we've used so far on cardboard, we've used it on grey board, and we've used it on, you can use it on vellum, you can use it on parchment, but you can also colour wood with it. So this is a slice of wood, so I can go straight in with my dauber and colour straight over and one coat onto a piece of natural grain wood and you will see the colour through and switch to using one of the blending petals. I find this a lot easier for wood so it doesn't tear as much. But if you can see there I'm colouring the wood but I can still see all the natural grain through. If I carry on and add more layers, I can take that off, but I've been able to shade that wood piece straight away. And again, that's on and fixed. This time I've got a piece of MDF. So just standard MDF laser cut. And again, no gesso, no base color. This goes straight on. And I find again, this is easier with a finger dauber, but I can just add these shades. So I'm just adding shades on one finger dauber and I'm blending lots of different colors into this. I'm gonna put a little bit of green in. But you see how beautifully all of the shades mix together. Go with a little bit of bronzy brown here at the bottom. I'm gonna go into some of the blues a little bit of blue on the base, a little bit of green. And once you've got your base colour on, you'll see it beautifully mixes. And I've got then, straight from wood, a fantastic, beautifully coloured piece. And I can again, because it is neutral, I can simply take a stamp so any clear or rubber stamp, whatever you have, no problems at all. And when I eventually find the ink, I'm just going to do the, the ink in the hand, stamp in the hand, pick up the stamp and show you how I can add texture and stamping onto that straight onto the top. I don't have to gesso or do anything in between. Let's lay a little bit on that space there. There we go. And I can still highlight, so I can go into one of the bronzy colours. And again, that will sit over the ink. So I can just fade that back in. And if you notice, like a gilding wax, it's highlighting and shining on those edges where I'm using these metallic colours. And I can blend it through still add a little bit more colour and I get a really simple tag. So that's an introduction to Mica Magic by Craft Artist. I hope that gives you some tips and ideas of what you can do. Mm -hmm.